welcome to a special edition of WAKA. It's not Geek Talk today, it's Oktoberfest Beer Talk. And why am I doing this? Because you see so many Oktoberfests out there in the store and six packs. How do you know which one to try? Well, I like trying a lot of them during the fall. It's my favorite season, and I have my favorites, but I also have ones I try uh, new each year. And, um, you know, I, I try those, and then as, as fall turns into you know, more of the uh, Halloween feel. I began to try pumpkin ales. We'll do another video on that later. But first, what am I drinking today? First of all, this is Weinstefaner, which is one of my favorite Oktoberfests of the year, one of my favorite beer uh, companies in general. And I am drinking out of uh, the Hofbrauhaus Stein, which I got at the Hofbrauhaus in Las Vegas, which is a wonderful place. Vegas is a wonderful place, but I mean the Hofbrauhaus there in Vegas is a wonderful place. Um, so let's talk about these today. First of all, what is an Oktoberfest supposed to taste like? Well, that's not just one answer. It's usually mostly two main styles. Uh, what's funny is here in America, what is uh, served as Oktoberfest is actually based more of an older Oktoberfest style from a couple hundred years ago. The uh, Oktoberfest Martzen, which Martzen meant like um, March beer, basically. And then, but then it would be brewed in March and then saved for Oktoberfest originally. But now in the actual Oktoberfest in Germany, they tend to serve mostly a lighter lager than the more full-bodied malty uh, Marzen that we tend to have here in America. But we've got more um, current Oktoberfest style brews in America as well right now. Let's talk about them. So first of all, I said I'm drinking Weinstefaner and this... I, and I'm going to put a little images up here so you can see them better than the light reflecting off of these bottles. And by the way, I am going to mispronounce, I promise you, I'm going to mispronounce a lot of the German words today. And I apologize uh, to everyone who knows the proper pronunciation. Actually, I don't apologize. Just deal with it. Laugh at me if you want. You can have fun as I, as I try to pronounce things and don't always get them correct. But uh, get your Stein ready. Get some beers ready as we go through these. Get your German drinking songs. This is an old record I grew up with. My family wasn't German. We, I didn't speak German. I didn't understand a word of this, but I love the record. I love the way it sounded, and I love to listen to this because I wasn't allowed to drink beer growing up for some reason. I don't know. My parents had this thing about rules and responsibility, you know. So, but I do enjoy lots of great Oktoberfests now. So, first of all, Weinstefaner uh, is claims to be the oldest brewery in the world, as being a thousand years old. Uh, it's the uh, it's a Bavarian state-run uh, brewery, and it says it was founded by the, or it used to be, uh, actually, the Benedictine monks were doing beers there. So that's pretty impressive. And I will say, it's one of my favorite Oktoberfest, their fest beer of the year, because it is the style current to what's being done in Germany right now for Oktoberfest. It's light, it's, it's easy to drink, it's flavorful. It's just good. And it's just easy. It's it's nice. Now, two years ago when I did a review, I also compared Weinstefaner to this one, Warsteiner, which is hard to see. I'll put the image up here. And I gave Warsteiner the nod as being slightly better than Weinstefaner's Oktoberfest uh, two years ago. Well, this year it switches, folks. That's right. This year I actually like the Weinstefaner one a little bit better. And the reason is I feel like it's a little bit more flavorful but they're both good and they have both very similar looking bottles now as for Vi as for Varsteiner uh, it actually it says it was founded in 1753 <laughs> it's like yesterday compared to the thousand years old Weinstefaner I mean if you see if you want to try a newbie beer here from 1753 uh, Varsteiner is very good um, you can find more about them at varsteiner.com and you can find more about Weinstefaner here, and there's a website right there on the uh, page. Those are two of my favorites. Now, I will say, I haven't reviewed these yet, but last year, the two that took my favorites were Polliner's Oktoberfest Martzen. I tend to be a Martzen lover more than the, the newer Oktoberfest. Uh, I like the Martzen more caramelly one, a little bit better. So last year, Polliner was my number one, and my number very close. Uh, number two was Anger, which is also uh, nice. And, and you can get both of these. Uh, they have, they're have they both available plentiful here, at least around Los Angeles. If you go to Total Wine or if you go to Trader Joe's, well, maybe not Trader Joe's. depends on the Trader Joe's. You can get single uh, bottles. 
And if you go to like Bevmo, you can get a huge like 24 ounce Stein with a giant can of Polliner's Oktoberfest in it. Uh, so give that a try. Now, if you're looking for now, by the way, both of these were about. Um, I believe that Vian Stefaner was ten dollars for a six pack when I got it. I think a Varsteiner was nine. Now this one was also nine, and this. So I mentioned Hofbra, where I visited the brewery. Now Hofbra House has lots of good beers. I'm going to give them a number three though, right behind uh, Varsteiner and uh, Vian Stefaner, because Hofbra is very good. I just felt this year it was didn't feel quite as flavorful, but it's still good. It's still easy to drink. And if you want to find out, and by the way, Hofbra was originally a beer hall founded in 1589 by the Duke of Bavaria. And it's one of the oldest beer halls in Munich. So if you want to go to the American version, which is still run by the main office, it is in Las Vegas and it's great. Also, I got to help DJ and run sound at an event for Ari, the 100 year old camera company, German camera company here in Hollywood, and that was what was on tap for the party that night. It was all uh, Hofbra beers. Pretty awesome. Right out of the keg. Okay, uh, here's Hofbra House's uh, website. Now, let's talk about other Oktoberfests that you see out there that are more commercial. Um, first of all, you've probably seen what looks uh, very similar to this bottle. The very similar bottle to this is Sam Adams Oktoberfest. They do one every year, and I honestly, I feel like it's hit or miss. Some years, the Sam Adams Oktoberfest is great. Other years, I'm like, meh. This is one that I find to be the same price, similar looking bottle, but better usually. And this year, I really like it. It's um, it's got a, it's kind of like a combo of the more lighter current Oktoberfest beers in Germany and the older Marsden style. It's really interesting. But it's a Shiner Oktoberfest, which is out of Texas, but they have worked with German breweries many years to come up with their Oktoberfest. In fact, this year, I'm not sure who they're partnering with this year, but it does say that it is authentically done in the German style, and it's a Marzen, but I I feel like it's, it's kind of like a Marzen and a little bit of the current lighter Oktoberfest in German style. Like I think like it's in between the two, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Now, I'm going to do a couple of fall ales that are also good to drink at this time that you might be surprised at, and I'm surprised at myself on this one. This is crazy. So here we go. Uh, pecan ale. Uh, I thought this was going to be a joke. Um, I just thought I'd try it for fun. This is um, Abita's Brewing from Louisiana, and it says their pecan harvest ale is made with real Louisiana pecans. And the natural oils from the nuts give the ale a light pecan finish and aroma, subtle, unique, nice. I thought this was going to be like a joke of a flavored beer, but actually, I liked it. Um, it's hard to place the flavor. It doesn't taste overwhelmingly pecan-y. You know, it's not like you're drinking liquid pecan pie. Don't worry, it's not that sweet. It's just pleasant. The nuttiness is just there enough that I found it to be pretty good. Which kind of surprises me. Now, I will do another episode very soon. Getting into the pumpkin ales. Now, some of you are like, wait a minute, you can't even mention pumpkin ale in the same video as an Oktoberfest because that's heresy. Pumpkin ale is, uh, you know, an abomination and it is, you know, not authentic compared to Oktoberfest. Okay, you know what? There's plenty of Oktoberfest brews out there that are also abominations, especially some of the ones produced here in America that just call themselves Oktoberfest. But there are some decent pumpkin ales. One of them that I like because it just has that kind of fall season with a little bit of flavor is, and once again, Shipyard. Um, and the reason why is Shipyards is light. It's not, it doesn't taste like a flavored ale. This does. Shipyard's other one, Smash Pumpkin, it's the one they came out with more recently. Don't care for it. Uh, it's, I think it's only in the can, but it tastes like flavored. And if you really want flavored, here's one that has a very cool label, really cool label. This tastes like flavored beer. If you like pumpkin flavored beer with other spices, this is a spicy kick. I didn't actually care for it all that much, but I know those people really like it if you like that flavor spicy. Now, they also have a pack here, a four pack of other Elysian um, pumpkin brews, and I haven't tried any of the other three styles. So maybe I will, and I'll get back to you in a future video when we get closer to Halloween. But for right now, I hope you enjoy my reviews on these Oktoberfest ales. Again, I love Polliner, Anger, 
Weinstefaner, Warsteiner, and I even like the Texas Shinerbach Oktoberfest. It is, um, or Shiner Oktoberfest, also pretty fun. And it's a cute little bottle, too. But whatever you drink this Oktoberfest, try to drink it in a stein. And I will catch you all with more movie and show discussions, and I'll do another beer tasting round very soon.